have suffered enough. Why continue to mistreat them? It is not mistreating them to take reasonable precautions. Whatever you call it, the situation with the mages is unstable and likely to deteriorate, just as the circles did. What did you think we were doing, taking the mages prisoner? These mages seized Redcliffe and threw out its people. They must face justice. While this certainly buys us public approval, I worry it won't last. The mages will rebel again. Enough arguing. None of us were there. We cannot afford to second-guess our people. The sole point of the Herald's mission was to gain the mages' aid, and that was accomplished. The voice of pragmatism speaks. Here I was, just starting to enjoy the circular arguments. Closing the breach is all that matters. Closing the breach will require a lot of magic, and that means lyrium. I have contacts who can help. Contacts meaning smugglers? Send them word. We need every advantage. We have legitimate lyrium supply lines already. And they don't need to hear of this. Keep it under the table, and I'll do what I can to quiet rumors. We should look into the things you saw in this dark future. The assassination of Empress Selene. A demon army. Sounds like something a Tevinta cult might do. Orle falls, the Imperium rises. Chaos for everyone. One battle at a time. It's going to take time to organize our troops and the mage recruits. Let's take this to the war room. Join us. None of this means anything without your mark, after all. And I'd hope to sit out the assault on the breach, take a nap, maybe go for a walk. What is it they say? No rest for the wicked. Meet us there when you're ready. I'll skip the war council, but I would like to see this breach up close, if you don't mind. Then you're staying? Oh, didn't I mention? The south is so charming and rustic, I adore it to little pieces. There's no one I'd rather be stranded in time with, future or present. Excellent choice. But let's not get stranded again anytime soon, yes? I'll begin preparations to march on the summit. Make a willing, the mages will be enough to grant us victory. So Fiona and her malcontents are finally under proper authority. That's an excellent beginning, my dear. We will have to discuss how to administrate this new asset. Cullen doesn't have enough Templars to handle incidents. Some of the rank and file need to be trained. We can handle the mages, there's no need for Templars. Have any of these men faced an abomination before, my dear? Have you? The veil is broken, and the raw power of the Fade rushes out like floodwaters through a shattered levee. In ordinary places where the veil is weak, magic is much more likely to attract demons. Do you imagine the rebels are safer from demons now that horrors pour out of the Fade unsummoned? There has never been a greater threat to mages than the Breach. Until it is closed, no one is safe. When you say mages are a danger, are you counting yourself? Of course I am, my dear. Every mage who joins the cause is taking a calculated risk, whether they know it or not. Magic is dangerous, just as fire is dangerous. Anyone who forgets this truth gets burned. You're preaching to the choir, Vivian. Tell me something. You said once that you wanted to change things. What future would you build for mages?
The circle has to be restored if we want to keep the peace. That's comforting to hear, but you'll find opposition to the idea even among friends. It's something to consider, my dear. The Inquisition appreciates your assistance in this matter, Lady Corbin. And my miners appreciate your business. You'll have your Lyrium by the end of the week. I should tell you, Ambassador, the Chantry raised some fuss when they learned about our arrangement. The Inquisition must certainly seem an audacious idea to the Grand Clerics. We hope to convince them it is a necessary one as well. I'll take my leave. Good day. Who is she, Ambassador? A merchant. I thought we should reach out to the Dwarves to secure Lyrium for the Inquisition's mages. According to Lady Corpin, it raised the ire of the Chantry. How? Access to Lyrium makes us rather more formidable than anticipated. We're becoming a challenge. Sadly, the remaining Grand Clerics appear to be consolidating the Chantry's power, instead of comforting the masses. The Chantry couldn't solve its own problems when it had a Divine. Yet many people continue to bear it great love. We will not benefit from its decline. Little but the Chantry ties Orlais, Nevara, Ferelden, Antiva, and even Rivain to a common cause. Has the Chantry truly promoted such peace? Andraste's chant is familiar across kingdoms, a source of many shared customs. That is the crucial point. Common ground is the start of all negotiations. So, if everyone listens to the chant, things will be smooth as silk. I did say commonality is merely a beginning, but it's an important one. We must learn to think beyond our own wants, to secure peace in Thedas. How did someone so lovely and selfless go into Orlesian politics, Lady Montelier? Well, that is, uh, really, you give me too much credit. While you're here, I do have a question. The remaining Grand Clerics sent a missive inquiring about the events at the Temple of Sacred Ashes. They demand to know whether the Inquisition officially claims that Andraste saved you from the breach. If it were up to you. How would you reply? Will my answer change your reply to the Chantry? If Leliana, Cassandra, Cullen and I could agree on our official stance, I could answer that. We should decide soon. The revered mothers don't seem to know what to make of you. I'd tell the Chantry I was saved by circumstance, not divine intervention. Yet as rumors your Andraste's herald grow, the Grand Clerics may not believe such a humble reply. A difficult situation, and I thank you for your answer. A good day to you. Good day to you. Farewell. Magic exists to serve man and never to rule over him. Foul and corrupt are they who have taken them. Mages. Lovely. They should have this breach sealed. It seems Blackwall knows nothing about the disappearance of the Grey Wardens. It's a disappointment. I am, however, glad that he is with us, even if he was not what I expected. He seems to be a good man, and his experience will be an asset to the Inquisition. <sighs> As for the other Wardens, I suppose we will have to keep looking.
In Redcliffe, you sacrificed yourself so that I could return here. Of course I did. One small life in exchange for a second chance at history. I always loved a bargain. It was still a sacrifice, and still noble. And I would do it again. Why do you want me to seek out the rebel mages? Why do you care? I've known mages. Some of them were better people than me. And yet I'm free and they're not. It's not right. Later then. The Mage Rebellion joins the Inquisition. I've got to admit, that's a twist I didn't see coming. One thing you saw in the future worries me. I mean, it was all bad. But Red Lyrium and Ferelden infecting people and growing out of them, that's bad. Finding more of it really punches a hole in my Red Lyrium at the temple was a coincidence theory. How long does it take for Red Lyrium to grow? How fast can it spread? It took years to infect people in Kirkwall, but no one there was actually ingesting the stuff. This Elder One managed to take the worst thing I can think of and make it worse. That's an accomplishment. The Inquisition has the numbers to track down all this Lyrium and destroy it. I hope so. I don't want to think about what happens if it starts a plague. I've got people trying to find out where the red stuff came from. I think maybe we should make that a priority. But that's enough doom and gloom. You just won a big victory for the Inquisition. What are you going to do to celebrate? That's a good point. We should celebrate. A banquet. Something like a banquet. A word to Josephine, and I bet she could arrange anything. Things should be calm around here for at least the next hour. Take a moment to enjoy it. If the world's about to end, I'm sure the Seeker will let us know. It is good to be surrounded by mages again. Put a leash on the rebel mages, I see. Interesting how they seem to like the idea. As if it's a relief to be penned in again. It can't have been easy. Life on the run. Hunted all the time. Better to be in the fold than out in the wilds. For a sheep, that is. It all depends on what you do with these mages later. No guarantee you'll throw them back into circles again, I suppose. I mean, unless you're as thick as you seem, which would be sad, really. It occurs to me that I barely know anything about you. Beyond my being a mage from Tevinter, you mean? Beyond that, yes. And beyond my being so charming and well-dressed, which is obvious to anyone. I'm well aware of your finer qualities, believe me. Of course you are. You're a discerning and intelligent woman, after all. Now, what was I talking about? Ah, yes, me. I am the scion of House Parvis, a product of generations of careful breeding and the repository of its hopes and dreams. Naturally, I despised it all. The lies, the scheming, the illusions of supremacy. That's Tevinta in a nutshell, isn't it? Needless to say, my family was not happy with my choices. What did you mean by generations of careful breeding? The great families of Devinta don't have children. They refine traits, weed out the undesirable, and promote the rest. My mother was chosen for my father because magic runs strongly in her blood. Never mind that they loathed each other. 
They wanted a son who could become Archon to make House Parvis the envy of the Imperium. They got me. A cautionary tale that you should be careful what you wish for. Why would your family be upset with your choices? Because I rejected their idyllic plan. If they had their way, by now I'd be married to some unlucky girl from a powerful family. We'd live in luxurious despair, despising each other as I waited to take my father's place in the Magisterium. I declined the honor, and thus it's best I'm far from home. Less of an embarrassment that way, you see. I'm getting the impression that you don't care much for your homeland. On the contrary. I care for my homeland a great deal. There's so much potential. Sadly, we squander it. We refuse to acknowledge how far we've fallen because pretending is easier. We pretend the Canari can be beaten. We pretend that we're superior to everyone, even our own people. Not everyone feels that way. I don't. Sadly, we're the minority. It just seems... So much of what you say about the Imperium is entirely negative. It might sound that way. For all our faults, my people have many virtues. We are laden with history and culture. Tevinta is where Thedas truly began, remember? We treasure our past and preserve it. You can walk down a side street and find nothing built during the modern ages. And despite appearances, we care deeply about everything. We have no reserve, not in war and not in love. If I truly believed my homeland was beyond all hope, I wouldn't miss it so much. Why remain with the Inquisition? Why not go back to Tevinta? <laughs> I'm not exactly welcome back home. Not that it matters, I'm quite accustomed to being a pariah. It adds to my charm. I can do more for Tevinta here. If the Venatori succeed, it'll set my homeland back a thousand years. I'm sure some Magisters would disagree, but that's why we kill them. I think I've heard enough. That's too bad. I never tire of talking about myself. I'd like to ask you about Tevinter. Ah, yes. Everyone outside the Imperium always seems quite fascinated by it. Probably why they come up with so many ridiculous tales. Flying cows over Minrathus. That's <laughs> madness. All right, that one's actually true, but the cows didn't have wings. I digress. Anything in particular you wanted to know? Anyone who talks about the Imperium mentions slavery. It's the center of the slave trade. Ah. That is true. And... Did you have slaves? Not personally, but my family does and treats them well. Honestly, I never thought much about it until I came south. Back home, it's how it is. Slaves are everywhere. You don't question it. I'm not even certain many slaves do. You think slaves like it that way? Don't be ridiculous. I didn't say they like it. It's all most of them know. In the South, you have alienages, slums, both human and elven. The desperate have no way out. Back home, a poor man can sell himself. As a slave, he could have a position of respect, comfort, and could even support a family. Some slaves are treated poorly, it's true. But do you honestly think inescapable poverty is better? Is that what you call it? Treated poorly? Abuse heaped upon those without power isn't limited to Tevinter, my friend. I don't know what it's like to be a slave, true. I never thought about it until I saw how different it was here. But I suspect you don't know either. Nor should you believe that every tale of Tevinter excess is the norm. Magic exists to serve man. These people are inquisition truth. 
Oh, down in Ringling, giving those people some real. Well, that's mages all over. So many robes. I bet all of Ferelden lost their curtains. I'll just be the other side of Haven, just in case. Do you have a problem with our new allies, with mages? No problem with mages. I mean, you know some that are all right. My problem is magic. If mages sat on their hands, everything would be fine. You know it too, that's why you're shoving them up towers after. That's good, right? So we have gained the mages. Excellent. They should be able to seal the breach. You are certain you experienced time travel. Could it have been an illusion? A trick of the Fade? Dorian was sure. Impossible as it seems. What an amazing gift. It is vital the Inquisition succeed to avoid the future you witness. So many were dead. More had been corrupted. Knowing what will happen if we fail. I suggest we not fail. Speaking of which, you should ready yourself. For? This Elder One. You have now interfered with his plans twice. Once at the Temple of Sacred Ashes, and now again at Redcliffe. A being who aspires to godhood is unlikely to ignore such an affront.